Kapa and Kapa Rabati Kapa Manda Kapam the Kaparada Ragata Bakata Kata Rabata Pam the Kapadia Sananta Kapa and Quante Kapam the Yada Sadia Lete Kapanda Ronda Kapadiande. You say, open your mouth and I will feel it. Sapanda kataya, branda kabana kataba, rabada ban sata kapa, arambali ando sabalodia, ragada banda katia. Lord, our mouths are open. Salata kapa, mento no kumparagada. We acknowledge we can do without you. Shakata, mente kate kaparahaya. Some trust in us. Some trust in chariot, but we remember the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Hear the righteous run into it and they are saved. Shakadia Labranda, Sobele Sagada, Entwaragada Shata, Menteketom Bragada, Ragada Balagada. We acknowledge our helplessness without you. Shatega and Kaparada. Mente katapanda, lento kapanda kate, ragadapanda sagada, reando sagada, ream palagada, mante katon sagada, regate katabaragada, breed upon us, shakanda de, ragadapanda kabahaya. Have you not assured us that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagle to day, oh God. God, we wait for your coming. Shakala Barande, Ekwanda Rakapai, Renteke Paragadai, lay your hands on us. Kandeya Barahaya, Boladika Paradaya, Beos on wings as eagle. Shakande, Priando Kaparahaya, have you not scouted a place for us? Lord, lead us. Shakanda Barahaya, Shabanda Kapaladia. Lead us, we follow. Shabanda Kabahaya, Reando Koparahaya. Let the mountains be brought low. Let the valleys be lifted high. We want to see your glory upon the earth like never before. Shale Kaparahaya, feel us, feel us again. Abalita Mahaya. Feel us again. Feel us again. There's this yearning nothing can satisfy. There's this longing that nothing can satisfy. There's this calling that nothing can answer. There's this calling that nothing can answer. Lord, we want you and nothing else. Kayeda Bahaya. There are nations to go. There are people to feed. I am Dokabalahaya. We hear the call of nations, but how can we go without your hand upon us? Ekambalahade, Shada Kapahaya, Likwanda Kapahaya. Breed or breed, breed or breed, breed or breed, breed upon us, breed upon us. Ekambalahade, new wine, new wine, new wine.
Aleluya. Second Timothy chapter 1. It's a charge. Verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God other translations say to stir up the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Hallelujah. There are many characters in the Bible that we all want to be like. I heard someone said he wants to be like Elijah. I heard someone wants to be like. Said this, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. I want to be like Paul. I want to be all kinds of characters. But this particular character, Timothy, is one of the characters that have inspired me over the years. Because one day I was reading my Bible and I saw that Paul was writing to Timothy. And Paul called him my true son, Timothy. So I began to ask myself, what makes a man a true son? How is it possible for a man to walk the earth and have many sons? But yet wrote to a particular one and called him my true son. Which means there are many sons, but there are true sons. And so I began to investigate the life of this young man called Timothy, of course, a great grandfather now. And I saw that he followed foolishly. There are three levels of relationships in the journey of a believer. The first level of relationship is the relationship with a generation that have gone ahead of us. The second level of relationship is the relationship with the generation that we are born with. The third level of relationship is the relationship with the generation that we will leave behind. And so in investigating his life, I saw that Paul, writing to him, began to say to him that there are, there are three levels of this relationship, even in your life, Timothy. One of the things that happens is that the generation that we are born with, we owe that generation a revelation of God. Because every one of us is a custodian of a dimension of God. So as we journey the path of life, it is... A responsibility we owe to our generation to reveal the dimension of God that we carry and so as we are going somebody's going to look at you someday and say I have never seen patience like this before I have never seen God in generosity like this before there's there's, there's just something about God that each and every one of us is amplifying with our lives and the second generation is the generation that is above us. What we owe that generation that is above us is our loyalty. Why? Because they have worked with God. They have done a lot of exploiting God. We owe that generation our loyalty. We serve that generation. But before we leave, there is a generation we will leave behind. The generation we will leave behind, we owe that generation a legacy. Legacy of our work with God and our exploit and our and the and the things that we have used his word to have achieved That will become a pathway for that generation to also follow and find their part in God The sincere truth is that if we don't understand these three levels of relationship We will be competing with people that have gone ahead of us 
And instead of being loyal to that generation, we will compete with the inheritance we ought to inherit. The greed of our generation is that we are following, but we are not following for what we ought to inherit. We are following for what we can benefit. So we saw a man by the name of Gehazi. He was following, but his eyes was not fixed on the inheritance. His eyes was fixed on the things he could get. Oh, if Pastor Chinto can pay my school fees, let me attach myself to this ministry. They will give me food when I am hungry. But much more than meeting your need, there is an inheritance to inherit. And so when we follow this kind of graces, you can't find us in corners criticizing the graces we are following. Why? Because the graces we follow is the grace we inherit. The scriptures have showed us that gleaners are inheritors. So Ruth followed where they were harvesting because one day will come when gleaners will inherit. Let's not follow foolishly. The Bible said, and the sons of the prophet said, don't you know that your master will be taken? But he is our master. He is our master. Why are they separating themselves? That separation denied them access to the mantle. When we follow, we should be conscious of the inheritance as well. That will give us spine to stay through even when we are being rebuked. That will give us spine to hold on even when it doesn't feel good. Because if we serve that generation loyally, one day Elijah will be taken and the mantle will fall. So Paul wrote to Timothy and said, I saw that there is this thing. I saw it in your grandmother. I saw it in your mother. But this thing does not end with a generation. It is transgenerational. It began with your grandmother. And God's intention is continuity. What God has begun with Pastor Chintok is not to end it with Pastor Chintok. It will be an aberration of consistency and investment. So one day, what do you think this place will become? A beer parlor? A club? No, much more than this is that somebody will collect something to sustain and expand this world. So as we are following, we are conscious. We are looking at the parts of the Father. We are looking at the sacrifices of the fathers. We are looking at what they are giving up to give. That is what we follow. I went to Benin to preach one day and the Holy Ghost asked me, when fathers leaves and mantles are not inherited, he said, demons come to play in cities. Because there was a day when a man stood in Benin and the entire nation could not resist his impact. But when we follow for materiality materialism and all of these things when fathers are taken a gap will be created so paul said to timothy you have followed me faithfully you have seen my manner of life you've been close enough you could smell my sweat you could see my weaknesses but i noticed something that there is something you have inherited don't shut it down because of your age don't shut it down because of fear you are not speaking good english don't shut it down because you don't have good say, say, uh, Go back to your closet. Shut the door behind you. And katuku pasta. Grakata kapande. Kiyota kaparande. Shakanto sekatakai. We stir up the gift and deposit of God. There are cities yet to take. There are mantles yet to inherit. There are grounds yet to conquer. But where are true sons? Inheritors of mantles. Where are they? Let's tear up ourselves once again this morning. Kapanda kabada, shala kabade, honda kabada lagade. Jesus, we stand ourselves. I won't be a coward in my days. Kadande kabaya. My generation will praise your name. Shut up. And how can we follow if we don't have the Holy Ghost? Post tata, be tata, our enabler, poor tata, the wind under our feet, palace tata, tata, tata. How can we follow without you? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh.
So lift up your eyes. See the Holy Ghost is here. Now humble yourself that you may receive. Jesus alone gives me power. 